high school. So you gotta get right down the water. Yeah, get right down the water. So good job. I do. I still work at the zoo. Okay. This is my first Sunday off in like three years. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Great. We're glad that you're here and took the time to be with us. Uh, one of the things that's really important around here and around Christendom, all over the world, is God's Word. And Branson, it's our pleasure to give you a copy of God's Word. It's got your name embossed here and New International Version. It's a little easier to read than some of the old leaves and vows. But uh, we hope that you put this to give you some study. Well, thank you. God bless you, guys. Before I formed you 
in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Do you hear all the possessiveness in that as well as the personality? God did what, over, what only a sovereign can do. He chose a man's life for him. Chose what he was going to do. And you know what? Sovereigns don't answer to people, do they? What does the word sovereign mean? It means in control, in charge. No questions asked. What the sovereign says is what is going to happen. And they don't answer, especially to those that they rule over. Had Jeremiah not been the one that God was going to use, he wouldn't have heard from God in the first place. And in this particular case, even before Jeremiah's gave, Jeremiah's mother gave birth to him, God had appointed him to God's service, chosen in the womb. Now, does that not seem rather arbitrary to folks like us who, you know, talk about our freedom, our rights? Well, truly, God has given us rights, and, and because of a response to God, we have freedom in this country. But doesn't this seem arbitrary? But who are we talking about here? Who did the choosing? This is the very one who created the universe. This is the one who spoke the universe into existence. And it is the Creator's right to have His way with His creatures. How many of you are one of God's creatures? Right, the rest of you don't have a clue. <laughs> the, the point is, right, that we are the creatures. We are created of God. <laughs> a little girl by the name of Jamie uh, in a church I served a lot of years ago, uh, she was a sweet little thing. She was about this high. Every every uh, every Sunday after the service, when they would file out, I'd be greeting people at the door, and she would walk by. She would always shake my hand, give me a smile, and she'd say something sweet and everything. And one time when she was coming through, Jamie had a little problem pronouncing certain words, but uh, but you know we all knew what she meant. And as she came through. I said, Jamie, I'm so glad that you were here today. And I shook her hand. And she reached up, she patted me on the cheek, and she said, Creature, I'm so glad you were here today. <laughs> well, you know, Jamie, though, has a lot of wisdom there because I am a creature. I'm a preacher creature. But, uh, we are created, and God is sovereign. He's in control of things. Now, even if we don't understand that, even if we don't understand God's right to choose for us certain things, even if we don't understand it or agree with it, there's a part of each of our insides that says, that knows that we must respect Him. We must respect who God is and what He's done. You remember Lot's wife? She forgot that. She forgot the respect that was due to God. You remember the story of God deciding to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And how Lot and his wife, Lot was the nephew of Abraham, you know, Father Abraham, and uh, Lot and his wife and their children were living in Sodom, and God was going to destroy it. And what did Abraham pray? God, that's my nephew there, and his wife and his children. Can't you save them out of that? Don't destroy the city. God said, well, I'll tell you what. And essentially, if I'm going to make a long story short, he said, what he said to him was, if I can't find enough righteous people to save the city, I'll get them out of there. And so God sent two angels. And because the city was so wicked, it was going to be destroyed. And God was going to do the destroying. But those angels got Mr. Lot and Mrs. Lot and the little Lots out of the city before the destruction happened. But as they're walking up the hillside in safety, God had told them, when you're getting out of there, don't, don't look back. He told them through the angels, don't look back. Don't look back on that city as you'll see the destruction of God and it will destroy you. But Mrs. Lot had loved that city. She loved her home. She didn't agree with God's plan. And she didn't respect God's sovereignty. And so what did she do? Remember Lot, the Bible says? She turned. She had to have one more look. And guess what she got? There's an old saying that to those who will not agree with thy will be done, God will say, okay, thy will be done. God sometimes gives us what we want or think we need because 
He can't do anything else with us because we refuse to let him, because we refuse to honor his commands and his decrees. Mrs. Lot, it says in Scripture, was turned into a pillar of salt. Now, she got her last look at Sodom and it cost her her life. But guess what? To this very day, she's still there facing that city. Whatever, there's no saying true that says, be careful what you pray for. Because sometimes you get it. God is sovereign. It's not wrong to ask why. It's wrong to ask it like a judge. To ask God if he really knows what he's doing. And sometimes that's what we do, don't we? When God says, I'll tell you later, just do what I said now. It isn't time to quibble. It isn't time to struggle against God. He's still sovereign over all. And that's a comfort Jeremiah needed if he was going to serve God, the God with no name, as they knew him. There's a second fact that comforted Jeremiah. The first fact comforted him in the sense that he was, uh, he understood he served the sovereign God. And that meant that God was in control over everything. It's comforting if you're going to serve somebody to know that they know what they're doing. But a second fact that comforted Jeremiah was not only God's sovereignty, but his intimacy. Again, I want you to look with me at uh, these verses that are going to be on the screen for you in just a second about God's intimacy. Uh, verses 6 through 9, I want you to notice again these personal pronouns and understand the intimacy that God is extending towards Jeremiah. Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 6, O sovereign Lord, I said, this is Jeremiah speaking, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. And the Lord replies, and this is God saying back to him, don't say, I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then, Jeremiah says, the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, look, I.
Amen. As we... Uh...